thing as a bad boy. He was the exception that proved the rule. Oh, yeah. You transferred him to John Adams when he told Mr. Yarnell he'd get him if Yarnell didn't give him a 70 inside. Sure. That's Louie. So how's he doing at Adams? Oh, he's become much more ambitious now. Over there, he's threatening teachers for 85. <laughs> but today, John Adams strikes back. They're essaying one of their students over here. A tiger named Dennis Joplin. I don't know, baseball teams trade outfielders for pitchers. We trade hard-hitting delinquents for fleet-footed absentees. So why do you want me here? Because I am assigning Dennis Joplin to your homeroom. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Besides, with a record like that, I'd be afraid to meet him alone. Mr. Kaufman, a Dennis Joplin is here to see you. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Send him in, please. Dennis? Come in, Dennis. This is uh, Mr. Dixon. He's going to be your homeroom teacher. How do you do, sir? Hello, Dennis. How are you? And pleased to meet you, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, now, Dennis, you were sent here, you know, because everybody felt that a fresh start with a clean slate would do you good. Well, before we get into any clean slates, let's talk about this filthy slate right here. Guess my record's pretty bad. Well, you know, getting essayed out of a school is a very serious business. I hope you understand this can be your last chance, and... I'm going to make the most of it. And I was going to suggest that you'd better make the most of it. Mr. Kaufman, I'm not really as bad as what's on there. You mean your permanent record isn't true? Well, it's a little exaggerated. Would you like to hear my side? Go ahead. Well, at Adams, there, there are a few of the older teachers who really don't know what us kids are all about. This one teacher is really bad news. Now, here's the one really lousy thing I did. This teacher has a hearing aid, and well, one day in class, I got the rest of the kids to make her think their hearing aid was broken. One kid would stand up and say, may I leave the room? Another kid would say, can I please close the window? And then the rest of us would go, Bzzz, you know, like that. And, well, she kept hitting her chest. She thought the mechanism had gone haywire. Well, she ended up running out of the room. Next day, I told her how sorry I was. And, but from that day on, I was finished at Adams. What do you mean? Well, no matter what, that teacher was going to get even. I sure deserve to get punished, but... Well, a lot of that stuff just isn't true. And she stopped me from running for class president and had me kicked off the basketball team. You know, I would have started if it hadn't been for her. You must be pretty good. Adams had a tough team last year. Good morning, Mr. Dixon. Oh, hi, Richie. Richie, this is Dennis Joplin, who's transferring from Adams. Basketball player. Richie here is the manager of our team. Hi, Richie. Hi. We could sure use you, because our five starters graduated last year. 
Let's go on there, Miss McIntyre. I'll take care of you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Vicks. You know, I think I'm going to like it here. See you later, Richie. All right. Um, Mr. Dixon, uh, you have any connection in the music world? See, me and a bunch of the kids been planning to go to the Rolling Stones concert Friday night. And now we can't get tickets because they've been sold out for a month. Sorry, Richie. I wish I could help. Not exactly Phi Beta Kappa, huh? Well, up until long division, you were doing fine. That's no joke. When I was a kid, I was good in school. But then... I... Then what? Uh, then Mom and Dad started to fight. And, well, he wasn't around very much. Mom had to go to work in a drive-in. That left me and Angie. That's my kid sister. Kind of on our own. What's your father doing now? Now, the thing is, Miss McIntyre, those grades are mine. I know what you're getting at, but my home life wasn't any worse than a lot of kids. That's true. But it never hurts to understand the reasons behind a student's record. Well, okay. About three years ago, my dad went to see a movie, and he never came back. Did you ever try to tell any of your teachers at Adams about all this? No. Why? Like I said, I didn't want them to think I was making up excuses. I don't want you to think that either. Why it's awful. You know, that boy was railroaded out of Adams by a vindictive teacher. It's just terrible. Well, he sure got a lot of bad breaks that nobody at Adams seemed to take into consideration. Now, wait a minute, you two. George O'Neill, the principal over there, is a very fair man. A kid would practically have to pillage and burn two continents before George would essay him out. Yes, but if he took that teacher's word for it, what chance does the kid have? You know, I'm still young enough to remember what it's like. Hmm, what does that make me, Whistler's mother? Miss Johnson, as a future teacher, Whose word would you suggest we take, the students or the teachers? Well, I don't know. But even a criminal is innocent until proven guilty. But if a teacher accuses a kid of something, that's it. Anyway, I'm just filled with righteous indignation. Well, it's a change from your usual bubbling with enthusiasm. Look, Dennis was condemned to Walt Whitman, not the state penitentiary. I still think that principle was unfair. George does his best. None of us has the time to do the job we'd like to do. Amen. I'll drink to that. As long as it isn't get the principal wig. Oh, of course not. And to prove it, you can have my pickle. I don't want your... Well. Thank you. Is Helen, uh, she don't say much, but she's a real swinger. Don't listen to her. Hi, Helen. Dennis just transferred over here. He's gonna play basketball for us. Out of sight. I quit. Bernie keeps on giving me the elbow. Why don't you quit shopping? Why don't you find yourself another victim? Oh, wow. Uh, Come on, Rich. We need a six man. <laughs> Not me. I got a split. Hey, this guy will play. Okay. Come on. No, no, I better not. Oh, go ahead, dude. Show this dude how the game is really played. Will you come on? The period's almost over. Thanks, but I got slippery shoes. What do you think I've got? Well, I get all sweaty. No kidding, I'd better not. Is this guy putting me on? Go ahead, Dennis. You don't have to play hard with these guys. I'd like to see you play, Dennis. Come on, it's only for ten points. Yo, you hurry up. Don't ruin the game for us. Okay, but I'm gonna take it easy. Now. You with this guy here and this guy over here, okay? Come on, we'll take it out. See you later, Dennis. All right, let's go. Oh, 
already. I didn't even know it started yet. What do you want, an engraved invitation? Okay, look, now we're ready to play basketball. Are you ready? Yeah. Guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, we, we, we would have done better two against three. Oh, man. Where'd Rich find that guy? Hey, Phil, come on in. Yeah, come on, man. Dennis, are you okay? I'm fine. I was worried the way you're looking. Yeah, it's, it's an old injury. Lucky for me, it snapped right back. I heard it in the game, I scored 34 points. Well, Bernie and the others shouldn't have acted that way. Well, a varsity player shouldn't get mixed up in a playground game with guys like that. Throws your whole style off. The only time the whole year the Rolling Stones are here, and we gotta miss it. Richie said we'll get the ticket, sure. No, man, I can't help it. I tried everywhere, they all sold out. Hi. Oh, how'd the game turn out? Not so good. I sprained my ankle. Any luck on the tickets yet? No. This is the biggest disappointment of my life, too. Say, why weren't you born rich and famous? Hmm, because I'm handsome, witty, charming. Can't have everything. <laughs> Willie Brown could help us out if he was still around. Who's Willie Brown? This dude who lived on my street. He can get into anything. The Academy Award, the Rose Bowl. He could sneak in a Ku Klux Klan <laughs> meet. He was for getting in food. <laughs> Where's he now? Well, old Willie found a way to get into the army. And I don't think he found a way to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless somebody comes up with a big, brilliant idea soon, we've had it. You guys talking about the Rolling Stones concert Friday night? The one at McCracken Hall? I got a ticket. You what? Yeah, I got a ticket to the Stones concert. Why? What's the hassle? We've been trying to get tickets for days. Where'd you get a ticket? Hey, I'll trade you Richie for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see my dad is best friends with Mick Jagger's father. You mean that English dude? Yeah, they met during the war. They were on the same ship on D-Day. Actually, my old man saved Mr. Jagger's life. How did he do that? Well, who cares? Can you get any more tickets? Yeah, I, I can get all the tickets you want. Wow, would you get some for us? Yeah, I'll really? get them and you pay me back, okay? Yeah! yeah. Hi. 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 Hi, Will. Yeah. You should see this cat play basketball. Never in my life I've seen such... He's getting us all tickets to the Rolling Stones tomorrow night. Like I said, never in my life I've seen such... Slippery shoes. <laughs> what about me? Can you give me a couple tickets? What do you say? Anything. <laughs> hey, look, let's all go together. Oh, okay. 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 Well, don't you feel that a man should have the right to defend his own home? I thought that's what the police are supposed to get paid for. That's true, but the police can't be everywhere. More people got guns, more people get shot. How do you feel about that, Richie? Uh, what? I'm sorry, Mrs. Dixon, I wasn't paying any attention. I guess I'm a little excited. What about? Well, a bunch of us kids got tickets to the Rolling Stones concert tomorrow night. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How'd you manage that? Well, Dennis got them for us. Yeah. Good. Oh, Dennis, I want to see you after class for a second. Mr. Dixon, you want two tickets? <laughs> you want her to see me? Sit down. You're actually getting tickets to the concert for all those kids? That's right. You mind telling me how? Well, my Uncle Max's manager at McCracken Hall, 
He gets me tickets to whatever goes on there. Dennis, you know how much Richie and the others are looking forward to seeing the Stones. Are you kidding? It nearly blew their minds when I told them I could get them in. Then you know how bugged they'd be if something should happen and they couldn't make it. Well, what could happen? Listen, I can get 50 tickets if I wanted them. You wanted to go, Mr. Dixon? I can get you a couple tickets, too. No, thank you. Well, listen, I got bio next. I don't want to be late. Excuse me. Hey, let me know if you want a couple for tomorrow night. It's no problem. See you later. I've been talking to George O'Neill for three quarters of an hour. I haven't been on the phone that long since I tried to convince Myrna Needlin to go to the senior prom with me. It must have been an interesting conversation. Fascinating. A. Dennis never had a woman teacher who used a hearing aid. B. He does not have a sister. And C. His father is a very successful chiropractor who lives at home. He lied from beginning to end. I was afraid of that when I saw he couldn't play basketball. George said he lied about absences, about being excused from exams. He even lied about his name. He called himself Fred Spicer. Well, wasn't he sent to a school psychologist? Mm-hmm. Within two months, the school psychologist said Fred Spicer is completely cured. <laughs> he even fooled a psychologist. Yeah, but you can't fool the kids. In a little while, the whole school knew about Dennis. He didn't have a single friend. George kept switching him from class to class, but Dennis kept digging himself into one hole after another. How long has Dennis been at Whitman? Two days, why? He just dug himself into another hole. No, I keep telling you, I don't have anything, not one single thing for tonight. No, we're all sold out. Well, I can give you two for Saturday. You've got them. I think you're next. I'm Dennis Joplin. I'm very happy for you. I've come to pick up those 14 tickets I ordered for the Rolling Stones concert tonight. Joplin? Joplin. Check my file. Oh, come on now. Not again. What do you mean? The last time it was a Beatles concert. I had to wait over an hour before you could find them. Hmm. Well, I see. When did you order these tickets? About a month ago. I called back last week to make sure you had them. Joplin. You called back last week? I sure did. I called and whoever I spoke to said you had them ready and waiting. So somebody goofed. I'm sorry about this mix-up. That's okay, as long as I get the tickets. Was it a lady's voice? Yeah. Now that I think about it, it was a lady I spoke to. That's funny, because no lady works here. But... No lady has ever worked here. Why? You better beat it, kid. Jelly. I'll trade you for my tuna fish and banana. Tuna fish and banana? So that's how your hair got like that. Hey, Richie. How come Dennis wasn't in school this morning? Oh, he probably had to go pick up the tickets. Anyway, how come you're always thinking somebody's trying to put something over on you, Jason? Because most of the time they are. Oh, good morning, Dennis. You're a little late, aren't you? Something important came up. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's a real bummer. I had the tickets, but I lost them. What happened? Well, I was leaving McCracken Hall with 14 tickets. Pretty good seats, too. Now, uh, who do you think I see standing in line? The minister from my church. Uh, you see, he had promised these kids from an orphanage that he'd taken with a concert, and... Oh, what could I do? I gave him the tickets. Oh, that was very nice of you. Yeah, but how am I going to explain to Richie and that? You can't get tickets anywhere. Tell them about your minister. Mr. Dixon, could you tell them? I, I mean, coming from you, they believe it. No. Why? Because it isn't true. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Dennis, I saw you play basketball. No. Oh. So I'm not a hotshot basketball player. Is that a crime? Look, nobody cares how well you play basketball. What matters is that you felt you had to lie about it. Well, everybody brags a little sometimes. Sure. But everybody doesn't make up stories about hard-of-hearing teachers that don't exist. <laughs> sure had you and Mr. Coffin fooled, didn't I? And everybody doesn't lie about their parents to excuse his bad grades. You have the FBI checking up on me? 
And they don't lie about being able to get tickets to a concert that's already sold out. That was a mistake. No kidding. I just opened my mouth and the words came out. It was a lie. I didn't mean it. But it was a lie, wasn't it, Dennis? Maybe. But who does lie? I mean, after all, what's a credibility gap if it isn't a fancy name for a lie? And how about all those guys on TV that say, use this stuff and have all the girls chasing after you? Oh, sure. There's a lot of dishonesty around. Too much. And that's one reason why we've got to be straight with each other. Yeah, I guess so. And another reason, Dennis, is that making up stories about ourselves does not change who we really are. What do you mean? Isn't that why you lie? To make people think you're something you're not? To make people like you? Is that what I do? It sure doesn't help. You know, at Adams, I didn't have one single friend. That's understandable. Nobody knows who you really are. Maybe they wouldn't like me if they did. Maybe. Maybe they would. Quit it. Quit what? Giving me those Jason Allen looks. I didn't promise to get the tickets. No, but your pal did. Listen, what, what I got to say is it's a little hard. Well, I don't care. I'll sit anywhere. Is something wrong? I don't have the tickets. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. They're waiting at the box office. No, I, I just don't have them. I, I messed up. It, it's all my fault. That's just the way I am. What happened? Couldn't you get the tickets? You didn't get the tickets, Dennis? Well, yeah, yeah, I got them all right. Fourteen tickets, yeah. Just a little left to center. Great seats. Well, but see, on the bus, when, when I was coming to school, well, who do you think I run into? All my lousy luck. It's a minister from my church, and uh, he tells me about this orphan's home, and... tickets. My father's never even heard of Mick Jagger. Why, Dennis? Why'd you do it? I don't know. Just wanted y'all to like me. Man, you're nuts. You know that? Hey, Dennis. See you Monday. to spend your weekend. Well, it's a terrible party Friday night. It was a beautiful party. Mm -hmm. Then you spend Saturday and Sunday arguing about it, right? All right. Good morning. Hey, how was the Rolling Stones concert Friday night? Well, as a matter of fact... Dennis came through, didn't he? I knew it. Was it really wild? I mean, tell me about it. Well, I think it was definitely a musical breakthrough. You were there, too. Was he there? He performed. Mr. Kaufman played with the Rolling Stones, huh? He sang. Sang? You sing. Oh, I've been known to belt a few slurred, raspy <laughs> solos. <laughs> slurred, raspy solos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you thought you were putting me on, huh? Oh. I was putting you on. Oh. I was. <laughs> no, no, you think that 
I'd believe that he would sing with a rolling stone. Oh, 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 o